Hi there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be looking into this paper which is titled as Raptor Recursive Abstractive Processing for Tree Organized Retrieval. And this is from researchers from Stanford University. So the idea that this paper brings onto the table is to reorganize the documents into a tree-like structure. Wherein the existing methods of information retrieval Consider a chunk-based approach as the retrieval units, hence ignoring the relationship between these chunks and missing out on the overall holistic document context. Whereas with the approach that this paper proposes, they recursively embed, cluster, summarize the piece of text and create a tree out of it at multiple levels. So for example, as we go from bottom to top, the granularity of the information that we're trying to store in these nodes decreases which means we have little more holistic or coarser information that we store whereas the leaf nodes specifically are most granular so essentially there are two steps for this method to work the first is your tree creation phase and the second is your traversal phase so we'll go into each of them in detail as we go further in the paper let's see if they have anything extra that they've written in their abstract so because of this structure, they see significant improvement over traditional retrieval augmented LMs for several tasks. So yeah, as we know, right, RAG has two steps. First is the retrieval part. Second is the synthesis or generation piece. So instead of just choosing chunk strategy to be, let's say, sentences or contiguous 100, 200 words, rather if you choose to represent your document as the tree structure that they are suggesting, you'll have significant improvement in your entire rack pipeline. Whereas also for the cases where you're trying to do question answering on some little complex questions that require multi-hop reasoning. So that means if I ask the question and the answer is ideally supposed to get created from let's say the first line of the third paragraph and eighth line from the 99th paragraph. So for such queries wherein you will have to hop across multiple retrieval units to derive your answer this style of representing document work wonders and in a moment we'll look into how that happens okay so let's move forward and see the first phase which is a tree creation phase okay so in the tree construction phase there are essentially two base steps one is clustering second is summarization Okay, so this is how your raptor tree representation of your documents look like. So you have leaf layer, which has let's say five chunks, and then some combination of these make up six, seven, and eight, and then some combination of these middle layers make up the root layer, which is nine and ten. Now, a thing to notice over here is like there is no one to one mapping for the lower layers for the above ones. So, for example, six can belong to nine as well as ten. And same goes with 3 wherein it shares its information to 8 and 6. So that's one thing to note. Now let's drill down what exactly are these nodes. So for text chunks, if these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now for that matter, what they have chosen is they have traversed the text using sliding window of length 100. Now this is at a word level. Now as in when and each of these contiguous 100 chunks are treated as one leaf node. So this is first hundred this is second hundred and so on and so forth so just to maintain the contextuality so if you have a sentence and, and let's say the hundredth word is somewhere in between so they'll skip out this entire sentence and just make up the chunk with the sentence that occurs before it and this sentence is given to the next chunk okay so once these chunks are created the idea is to create n minus one layer so for this they apply clustering over these chunks and now this clustering is soft clustering as we saw right i mean you can share the leaf level nodes to multiple previous level nodes so with that we get three and five one four and five and two and three so so the intuition is that these nodes are essentially talking about similar or complementing themes so we can represent them using single node and now depending on at what level the question is asked we'll like to retrieve let's say answer from this node or maybe this node or the above ones and the same step is repeated again and again for forming the previous layers. So now this is represented at 6, 7 and 8. You could if required then cluster all these again and have just two root nodes. One is 9, one is 10 where 6 and 7 gets clustered and form 9 and 8 remains singleton and that's the 10th node that we have. I mean this again is a redundancy. If you want you can just 
avoid this you'll have just nine and eight as the root nodes and then the tree flows from there so yeah that's the entire idea of how the tree is constructed now what all information do we have in a node so they store the embedding of each node so since every node is nothing but essentially a text piece right whether that's most granular retrieval unit or it's little more coarser the idea is to have text over there so, so they use sentence transformers to transform it to a numerical vector for performing clustering and any sort of matching if required then obviously the text is stored they also store what's the child for this node and what's the index for this or the id for this so these are all the metadata or payload that they store with every node because each of these attributes have a different value to add as we traverse or create these trees okay so that was about the tree construction phase let's move on to seeing now if a new query comes in how are we really going to traverse this tree okay so let me see if there's any other detail that i can talk about so i talked about contiguous hundred tokens sentence word grouping similar using clustering oh i think i missed one point like once the clusters are created oh yeah so what are we really storing in this six right so that's nothing but the summary of five and six so seven holds the summary of one four and five and eight holds the summary of two and three and then you again cluster over these summaries which is six and seven and have nine that represents summary of six and seven so that's how the coarser information is getting created in this tree so yeah i think yeah i talked about like we have to do summarization but during that flow of explanation i totally forgot but yeah you have to summarize post you have clustered things okay then for querying yeah so now we talk about the querying piece so they have a diagram yeah so there are two things that they propose the first is tree traversal retrieval the second one is collapsed tree retrieval so let's talk about the collapse tree first so you have a query queue you first encode it and get an encoder representation of it and then you flatten the entire tree out so you have three four seven eight nine ten eleven twelve you have twelve nodes in a tree right so you create a list of all the 12 nodes and sim and do a simple cosine similarity based match for the query embedding and each of these text embeddings and that could be either text chunk of 100 units or the summary of the clustered retrieval units and let's say you see okay this is good this is good and this is good and they are above a certain threshold that looks good to me so you just pick all these three retrieve context add a query and pass it to the llm to get your answer for so that's a simple way of collapsing the entire tree and then performing the retrieval. The second is tree traversal retrieval, where you follow structure in which the things are represented. So you have a query queue, you encode it, get an embedding representation, and then do a similarity based search on the root node. And you say, let's say, okay, this is the best match that I can see across all three. Then this is your search space where you need to do second level of matching for the query right so you take query embedding match it with this and this and let's say this is the one that you pick up post this your search space again is now just these three elements you do the same step again and you have one node at the bottommost layer so in total you have chosen three nodes one is this one is this one is this and each of them are at different granularity so which means for getting the answer you have a lot of more context at multiple granularity level to get your answer for so these are the retrieve context you add your query pass it to the llm and get your final answer so yeah those were two retrieval that they experimented with now at every layer you can choose not just one but top k nodes and so on and so forth your search space will increase as you go towards the bottom of the tree and eventually you'll have a lot of more nodes under retrieve context which when added with query can get you the answer okay so that's what they have written over here as well feel free to pause the video and read through this so yeah i think we're done with the paper now they have experiments and results yeah so this is what raptor is helping you with right so they have done two experiments one is with raptor and without raptor for three kinds of retrieval methods one is bm25 which is syntactic then you use sentence bird to do semantic similarity based stuff then you have dense passage retrieval with and without raptor now on a narrative QA datasets using this as your language model, your Rouge, Blue and Meteor are consistently high regardless of the embedding or the retrieval method. And that too across all the metrics that they report. So yeah, that's pretty amazing, right? Okay, 
I think we're done with the paper. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also do share it across with your friends to whosoever you think are dealing with RAG, LLMs, Gen AI and general NLP machine learning deep learning space. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye bye and take care.